Hello and welcome to a head-to-head -head with two modern 60s classics. So roll the intro and let's get cracking. 60s classics? I think you'll find the word you're looking for there is crack. You told me we were doing a head-to-head -head of two bikes that ruled an era. Yes, we are. So let the intro roll and we can get cracking. Crack. Thank you. Bellend. Oh, hang on. Weren't I supposed to do the beginning bit? Would you like to do the intro? Not really. Can we move on now, please? Yep. So, in today's head-to-head, -head, we have the genuine article and the copycat. Ah, uh -huh. but which one is best? Indeed. So, let's see what's in today's lineup. In the orange corner, we have the 2019 Lambretta V125 Special. And in the white corner, we have the Royal Alloy GP125. So, why do we have the GP125 and not the GT125? Well, three reasons. One, this is the Lambretta V125 Special. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd get the special version of the Royal Alloy being the GP rather than the GT, which is the base model. That said, metal body, metal body, which has got to be good. Yeah. And they are both the same price. Ah, that's good. Indeed. So it made for a more sensible matchup, really. Sounds good to me. OK. It is also fair to note that these both have the fixed mudguards. See, look, wheel moves, mudguard doesn't. However, the Lambretta does come with a fixed or movable mudguard option. Yeah. Right, enough waffle. Let's start with the engines. Well, the Lambretta uses the SIM unit like that found in the Fiddle 3, which is a four-stroke, two-valve, air-cooled, single-cylinder engine developing 10 brake horsepower and 6.7 pounds-feet of torque. Whereas the Royal Alloy uses a refined version of the GY6 engine, air-cooled, four-stroke, two-valve with 9.5 horsepower, but also 6.7 pounds-foot of torque. Suspension-wise, the Lambretta has telescopic forks on the front, whereas the Royal Alloy uses double spring shocks on the front. On the rear, the Lambretta uses a single-sided rear suspension, whereas the Royal Alloy uses a single monoshock, which is also on one side. So, pretty much the same, really. Just called something different. Brakes are the same for both bikes. They both use a combined braking system and both have 220mm discs front and rear. Inside, 12-inch wheels, and both bikes use a 110 front tyre and a 120 rear. However, the Lambretta uses Pirelli Angel tyres, whereas the Royal Alloy uses CST tyres. There is quite a difference when it comes to fuel capacity. Indeed there is. The Lambretta has a 6.5-litre fuel tank. The Royal Alloy has an 11-litre fuel tank. Now, that's more user-friendly on the Royal Alloy's part, however, not considered a bad thing for the Lambretta because under here I could store a helmet and gloves and maybe a packet of crisps. Whereas under here you can uh, put a curly whirly. Any staple diet <laughs> item for the scooterist. I'm not sure I would want to put a curly whirly there. It might melt. Mm, well, all right. Um, a non melting. Curly whirly. Curly whirly. Like a, a peanut breakfast bar. There we go. Yes. So, Mal, what about other storage? Yes, well, in the case of the Lambretta, we have, with the turn of a key, space for a twirl and maybe a lion bar, which is good. It's got a USB in there as well. Yeah, there is a USB up here. Ta-da. And the immobiliser switch. And, yes, you can do that and shut that, and then your bike can't be started for whatever reason. It doesn't work. Whereas? Then, the Royal Alloy. Well, look at that. We can get a Christmas selection box and a Capri Sun in there. <laughs> oh, and we've got a USB as well. 
Marvellous. You can Brilliant. charge your Capri Sun. Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> right. I feel some scooter life challenges coming on. What, we have to wear long green jackets and fight Triumph Riders? No, no, no. That all stopped in the 70s or 80s. I think more like this. All right? My scooter. It's not much of a challenge, is it? Long standing gates and that, mate. Right, fine. I'll unbox Jamie, you get the cones. Ooh. So this is the manoeuvrability test. Jamie is going to slalom down the course, get to the end, do a turn in the road, and slalom back up the course again. It's not a timed event, it's just to see what the handling is like between the two bikes. In your own time, Carry on. Okay, Jamie, in your opinion, which one was better? To be honest, I think this one was just turned it out a little bit tight and a bit easier, to be honest, than the Royal Alloy. And because you sit more higher up on the Royal Alloy, it just doesn't feel as good when you're on the tight turns. Okay. This one for me. Drag race time. Okay, before we do this, please note, do not try this at home. We are professional stunt bellends. And in the interest of fairness, we're going to have a go each. So please don't leave in the comments, oh, if you fall off and break your head, it's the end of the world. We know. But it's just here, and it's our risk. Don't try this at home. That's that covered. You say professional bell ends? Uh, yes. Three, two, one, go! Okay, and swap. Well, what can we say to that? It seems to me that uh, we've had a few runs on each bike to and fro. There doesn't seem to be a lot of difference between them. No, they're pretty well matched. Uh, I mean, it's negligible. It's just one of us is possibly pulling away slightly earlier than the other one. Mm. Other than that, nothing to choose between them. Pretty much the same. Same speed, same acceleration. That's it. Just this one goes around corners better. Yeah. Right, back to the shed. No greenhouse. It's at this point we must apologise that we've, we look sweaty because it's hot. It is Apparently, in fact today. The hottest day ever. In the UK. In the UK. 38, 39 degrees, apparently. And we're inside. Yeah, so it's probably 45, 50 at least. So it has a steel roof. Yeah, it's hot. Mm. Steel with glass things. It's like being in a greenhouse. Looks wise, Kiska, the company behind KTM, Husqvarna and CF Moto, worked with Lambretta to design this scooter. However, some are saying that they went too modern with their design to where they lost the concept of what a Lambretta looks like. Well, yeah, Lambrettas should look like that, really. But, let's look closer. Right then, let's start with some comparisons. Pegs, or lack thereof, the Lambretta, has wings, been on the Red Bull, whereas the Royal Alloy has these pokey out pegs that you can just neatly click back in. The lights. 
On the rear of the Royal Alloy, you have this nice little ring that goes around the outside, and on here you've got Lambretta in the middle of it. Quite like that. And the brake lights? Yes, they both have them. Excellent. And what about indicators? Oh! Make you noise. Have beeps on the Lambretta. All built into the headlight unit. Yeah. And uh, other side. Hmm. Both as visible, to be honest. Yeah, cool. Right, headlights. Well, the first thing to notice is that the GP125 doesn't have royal alloy stripped through the middle like the GT does. However, the lights are both LED and on the Lambretta they're very much brighter. When you turn them on, the main lights are the same. Put the headlights on. There we go. All right, just flips from top to bottom on the Lambretta, and it gets slightly brighter on the Royal Alloy. It's got a flash Ooh, button there as I well. Like that. Yeah. Okay, I think I prefer the Lambretta lights, to be honest. Indicators and stuff making noise. Well, for me, nothing real different between the uh, indicators, but the headlights are much better on the Lambretta. Okay, the dash. First of all, the Royal Alloy. Well, it does that sort of flashy, flashy stuff, and it's all very standard for a Royal Alloy. It's very well illuminated. Yeah, easy to see. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Let's quickly zoom across to the Lambretta. Oh, good night. That's interesting. Hmm. Ah, oh, I wonder, because, you know, Ciao, in Italian, is hello and goodbye, isn't it? Could well be. So I wonder if that... Mistranslated. Yeah, maybe. I like this analogue gauge thing. I like that as well. I think, overall, I prefer the look of the Lambretta. And it is quite well illuminated also. Um, yeah. Hmm, OK. Out of the box, the Lambretta does not have a rear luggage rack, where the Royal Alloy does. I do like the ergonomic shape of this uh, Lambretta seat. Nice and wide. Very soft, very well put together. I do like that, if a little bit rattly on that back end there. Mm. Uh, the Royal Alloy one has the sucker seat. So you just lift it up and you've got six suckers. And it's very easy to put down. It's just literal, very gentle. Look, see it's stuck already. And I haven't even pushed it. Push it down. That isn't going anywhere. Reminds me of an octopus. Cool. They call that the king and queen seat, which I think is extremely sexist. Why can't it be queen and queen? Did we do this before? Move on. OK, on to the elephant in the room. Well, this front end design, this, a lot of people are saying, is too modern. They've still got this little scoop on the front, like they have on there, but that is very 60s looking, with the chrome bits and the, the extra sort of piping around the outside um, and the actual indentations of very... 60s looking, whereas this, people are saying, is too modern and too generic scooter looking. Thoughts? Yeah, the orange one looks like it's from the 80s. Well, the idea is it's supposed to be from the noughties and tenies and the yeah. 18, 19s. I don't know. That looks more 60s, especially with this design of the badge yeah. here. I like that. Uh, yeah. Right, wheels. Look, they have wheels. And they're of similar design. The spokes go slightly further up on the Royal Alloy. Other like, than that, there's not much difference. I like the polished rim on the Royal Alloy. You like a polished rim, do you? I do. Hmm. Next. OK, grips and bar ends. These ones do have Lambretta in there, and they're quite nice to hold. I do like them. I don't think they look as nice as these, though. Well, these are very retro-looking, aren't they? And they've got the Royal Alloy thing there. They have, well, this has got Lambretta on it. Yeah. Very different, but both very stylish. I don't know which one I like best, actually. I like these end weights. They've got little... Lambretta King cap, I'll show you, without even moving it. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. Exhausts, then. Um, well, they're sort of both in keeping with the style of the bike, aren't they? They are. Uh, again, the Lambretta is more modern-looking than the Royal Alloy, I think. Yeah. It is fair to note that you can get upgrade exhaust. The Royal Alloy does do a Scorpion exhaust, which I think makes it sound like a farting bee. Yeah. Not a fan of that. No, I don't like that. Stick actually. with the old one, I reckon. 
I would like to apologize for the slightly different layout of this video. That is because my Sony FDR X3000 camera that we do all the on bike shots has been buggered up by my Z1000's Vibe handlebars. When we went to the British Superbikes at Snetterton, it buggered up the gyroscope. Yeah, so all the video comes out like. It's not really that much good, is it? However, there is a GoPro Hero 7 Black on its way because that's going to be our new on bike camera. And it's cheaper and better than the FDR X3000. And more convenient because it's got a screen on it. Doesn't help us today. No, sorry. So, here's some other shots. Let me get my gear off and we'll chat. Well, the first thing I can definitely tell you about these two bikes is that they both ride pretty similarly. However, there is a difference. Now, the difference is the raw alloy, the handlebars feel a lot lower than they do on the Lambretta. They feel more up here. And I think I prefer the handlebars being higher than I do lower. That could be just me because I'm not usually a scooter rider but i do feel as though the handlebars up here felt better for me than they were down there um pickup wise both equally as good mm. really hardly anything to choose between them nice and smooth no judders no jitters pull away quite nicely no problems whatsoever as far as that's concerned reading the dash again both quite equal uh, mirrors wise these ones i think were a little bit better the Lambretta one's a little bit better, you can see a little bit more, but the other ones were probably more in-keeping style-wise. And let's be honest, if you're a scooterist, there's going to be 60 different mirrors to choose from at one point. Absolutely. <laughs> Thoughts? Okay. I haven't ridden an original um, Lambretta. Neither have I. So I don't know how an original Lambretta rides. Neither do I. So, if the Royal Alloy rides closer to how a Lambretta did back in the day, then brilliant. And that, you know, if that's what you want, then brilliant. But I think this one rides nicer. I okay. think the Lambretta is a nicer, smoother, easier to maneuver machine. Okay. What are your thoughts? Have you ridden this Lambretta? Do you have an original Lambretta? Do you have a Royal Alloy? What are your thoughts on them? And why did you go for the Royal Alloy? There is one thing I do think 
this would be better having, and that is those side slats with the fins on. And the fins are coming for that royal alloy, but you have to wait till September for those. Sorry. Well, there you go. You can get them on the GT, uh, but not on the GP. Don't ask me why. Can we get them on this? No. Shame. You can probably get other bits to go on it. I mean, let's be honest, there's always accessories to get little trims and things and mm. mirrors and the screen and all that lot. You can make them look very retro indeed. And they certainly have their massive following. Yeah. You know, they certainly have their place. Now, I know I've said in previous videos that I'm not really a scooter type person, but they are oodles of fun. Yeah. Twist, go, plenty of power, plenty of poke, 65 miles an hour at a push. I would say, um, but let's be honest, it's not really designed to do 75 down a dual carriageway, is it? No, that's not what they're for, is it? No. Um, I am very impressed with them. Hmm. They're well built, they don't creak, they don't, um, I like the old AJS Medina, which as soon as you're on it, eh, 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 yeah. eh. there's lots of plastic creaks eh. on that. You know, it's, <laughs> Yeah, whereas this, it's well built, it's well put together, the Royal Alloy is pretty much the same, mm. not a lot to choose between them. It just seems to come down to style. Which one do you prefer the look of? I prefer the look of the Royal Alloy and the ride of the Lambretta. I 100% agree with what he said, and that's quite rare. It is. <laughs> it is. So how do they measure up? Well, the Lambretta is 1,900 millimetres long, and the Royal Alloy is 1,870 millimetres long. The Lambretta is 690 millimetres wide, and the Royal Alloy is 620 millimetres wide. The Lambretta is 1,130 millimetres high, the Royal Alloy 1,115. The Lambretta has a shorter wheelbase at 1,330 millimetres to the Royal Alloy's 1,390 millimetres. The Lambretta weighs 134 kilos. Where the Royal Alloy weighs... kilos. Some kilos. <laughs> yes. yes, this information is not forthcoming, so let's go and weigh it. Yes. Right, wheel it in. OK, the front is... 53 and a half. Alright. And the back is... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Again. There it is. Uh, I'll get it in the middle, hang on. There you go. 79 and a half. So 53 and a half plus 79 and a half, what's that? That totals 133 kilos. One kilo lighter than the Lambretta. Yeah, and they do both have the same amount of fuel in them. Brilliant. Both bikes have a seat height of 770 millimetres. But I want to point something out at this stage. You will see here, look, if I zoom out, that Lambretta is not flat. In comparison to the Royal Alloy that has a flat floor, this one points upwards. And the reason for that is that not only is the engine based on the Fiddle 3 from Sim, so is the floor plan. And that is taken from the Fiddle 3 as well. Hence, it's pointy up at the back bit. Rake. That. I didn't know whether it was rake or not, so I didn't say it. But the pointy up at the back bit is just as descriptive, I feel. Mm -hmm. So what about that price then? Well, both bikes, like we said, same price. £3,099 on the road. I would like to point out that this bike is from the old stock that I bought before, and this one is still £2,899, the last one of that price. Hmm. Unfortunately, Royal Alloy put their prices up. Like most people do, to be fair, so yeah. I wouldn't say unfortunately. It Maybe happens. that's unfair. Prices went up both £3,099. You do, however, get this wonderful presentation key box with a key ring. And two Lambretta. other keys. You get three yes, keys. Two keys in here, one still in the bike. And what do you get with the Royal Alloy? The Royal Alloy comes with keys. Oh, there you go. Although they are chromey around the edge and they're quite nice. They are, yeah. They're very, very yes, nicely designed with an RA on there. So all in all then, it comes down to what it looks like and your preference and how they ride. Indeed. So that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. My turn now, is it? Yep. We'll be back with more... Projects, Bob, Mac, Enrinka, 
Yep. Uh, <laughs> also, if you want to support us, you can go to Patreon or look on the Facebook page for our guff. Yes, shop, in other words. Yep. Uh, the link's in the description below. And, of course, we'd like to hear your comments. Uh, is there anything else you want us to review? See if we can get hold of that. Bearing in mind the bikes that we do anyway. Other than that, I don't have much else to say. It's hot and I need an ice cream. Mm. So, until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye. Bye.